Hi, I'm Ishan from Fun FTC, and we're here with Team 18438. That's the Wolfpack Machina from Massachusetts. They've got the online world record. They're here at the MTI competing in the first ever in-person event as a rookie team. We got Jamie, Owen, Colin, and Olive here helping me talk about their robot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. Hey FTC fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Let's go ahead and take a look at your intake. You got some nice beams that you got across there, surgical tubing. Talk about your design process that went into building this intake. Yeah, so um, one of the main features, as you said, is the surgical tubing, as opposed to sort of like a more locked in roller. And through our like prototyping process, we tried out both like, um, like smaller Omni wheels and as well as the big tubing. And what we found is that the Omni wheels, the rings had to be perfectly positioned to sort of be sucked up the intake, but with this, um, you can kind of have them come in at weird angles, such as like this, and then they'll get knocked over by the tubing and sucked up the intake. Right, yeah. and so, so you have like second. this drop-down mechanism. Could you show us a little bit more about that, why you decided to go with a drop-down over just this, like this? Yeah, for sure. So um, if we turn on the intake, um, just this button. Okay, so what the drop-down allows us to do, it has a few functions. One, it has this bumper on the front that knocks over any stacks of rings and only pushes one in at a time. Just like, just like that. Another thing that it lets us do is strafe sideways into rings and sort of intake them from the side like this, which is really important for like really, really quickly grabbing rings from all over the place and trying to steal them from the opposing alliance and stuff like that. The last thing that it can do is it can rise to a 45 degree angle like this, and then it allows it to sort of intake rolling rings. We have to be moving, so it's not gonna work very well. But basically knock all of the rings over and then suck them right in. Right, so you got this first stage that will knock it over, and then the second stage will suck it in. How exactly. are you belting this all? Is this just standard go build a belt or something special that you're doing there? Yeah, so um, this is all standard go build a um, go rail that they sell, which is like aluminum extrusion with holes drilled in it for the surgical tubing, and then screwed into that is go build a um, pulleys connected to go build a belt, and it's all powered in the back right here by two motors which are connected through a chain drive. Yeah, and so you got this little wrap of surgical tubing on a diagonal spiraling around the tube. Why'd you go with that for just that rod? Yeah, so um, this was specifically for the intention of knocking down rolling rings because, oops, if a ring hits this and this is spinning, this is effectively turning. So this, it sort of pushes it down to the, to the side and knocks it sideways. Nice, like nice. That. And that was actually very recent. That was actually a really recent addition that we just did because we saw it on some other teams' robots and just thought, oh, we can get a length of surgical tubing. So we've also kind of done a little bit of like rapid prototyping just as we see stuff that works, adding it. Um, so yeah. Enough. Awesome. So now you got your rings in your intake or in your hopper. How do you how do you go about shooting them from your hopper? Yeah. So the main thing that we really prototyped a lot was this cover right here and just. Um, Finding the right shape that didn't let them jam, but also let them come in fast and at, and let them stack evenly. And so once they're in this hopper, this, what we call the scythe, pushes them in. And then comes they come through here into the flywheel, which pushes them around the 90 degree angle. Um, the another, other thing that's really big about our shooter is we have this turret uh, that can move in and out, which allows us um, to always be tracking the goal so that we can um, shoot while we're moving or from any angle on the field. Yeah, so our shooter works, sorry. So our shooter works really well with our vision system. Um, I don't think I've seen anyone else, like, obviously a lot of people here have been using thresholding with like, you know, custom open CV code. However, I don't think I've seen anyone yet with an auto calibration system. Um, so we developed that so that we could basically target a part of the goal 
lock onto it just with a single button press. Turn to the other goal, lock onto it. That way we can get high goal and mid goal shots. Um, and yeah, combined with our telescoping hood and uh, just rotation of the robot, we can pretty much hit high goal anywhere that we want. Um, oh, and on top of that, we also have a couple of trigonometric equations that allow us to calculate the distance to the goal. Um, on top of that, applied with the uh, uh, degree error to the goal, we can literally just ramp all the way back to the back of the field and still score high goal. So what do you do with that distance to the to the goal? Like, do you change the RPM? Do you have like a flap or anything to change the distance that the ring travels? Yeah, so we change the RPM and basically we calculate it with a kinematics equation that solves for the speed that the rings have to leave the shooter at based on how far away the goal is and then also the angle of the shooter and other constants like that. So we like dynamically change the flywheel's target RPM depending on how far away we are. Awesome. So now you, I see a lot of like metal machined parts. You're a rookie team. How did you get into machining stuff? What, what's been going on with that? You want to talk a little bit about some of the tools you got? Yeah, so um, we're partially funded by our school, and then we also had a lot of like sponsors from FLL, so we were like fortunate enough to be able to afford a CNC machine. And we spent like a very long time at the, um, the very beginning of our season in like September and October learning how to use it and learning like all of its different capabilities, which really allowed us to make parts make like most of our parts on here. Um, yeah, and that definitely helped with our prototyping process also is we could just cut really, really quickly a big like wood panel for something or a big polycarp panel for something. It's like really exact dimensions. Awesome, final thing I wanted to talk about was, was your wobble goal mechanism. Looks a little different than a lot of teams I've seen. Do you want to talk about how you designed that, what went into it? Yeah, so our big thing was just having a wide range of motion here and a large margin for error, um, depending on where the wobble goal is on the field. That way, Owen and I don't have to be as precise um, in our driving. Um, it went through a couple of prototypes, but that was the main idea, two long kind of talons. Um, yeah, and one of the main, one of our earlier ideas had this as, could you hold this for a second? Yeah. Had it as a, um, this plate on here, like sort of a static plate that went all the way out here, but that was really, really big. So instead we combined both the funnel and the gripper into one single piece that just funnels and then grips at the same time. Awesome. So you're, you're a rookie team, first time competing. What's changed since you got here, right? You came in with a strategy. What, what have you had to adapt to as a rookie team? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously we haven't had like any in-person experience before um, just a couple like weeks ago when we were like scrimmaging with a few teams. But um, yeah, I'd say the main change is in our strategy and then our like mechanical aspects that we adjust to conform to the new strategy. So like before at States, we had a big outer roller that was further out and covered in fabric. And that was really good at like our one specific strategy of intaking rolling rings as they come in. But we knew that that wasn't going to hold up here because there's four other, three other robots that are all trying to take your rings. So instead, we went for um, like a more versatile outer roller that can collect rings in many different orientations. Um, another thing that we did in addition to um, we already had you know auto aim and all that for actually an auto calibration, which was a big thing for actually getting uh, our rings in. But one of the changes that we've actually made between the robot that we went to states with and this robot is that the shooter's angle has been adjusted slightly. And the reason for that is we actually did a lot of slow mo analysis of how our shots were hitting the goal, so that the rings basically hit their apogee just a little bit before they enter the goal, which means that because they're traveling pretty flat we actually have a very wide range in which they'll still go in the high goal um, where we have a very good margin of error just mechanically based on our shooter really awesome robot right here nice job as a rookie team to be here at the mti you all are putting out a fight on the field we we'll hope to see you in the finals later this week um, and we will see you next time we would like to thank our friends at striker for supporting this video Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.